Hello, in this video I'm going to explain the difference between the PMP certification and the CAPM. So PMP stands for Project Management Professional and here you have the certified associate in project management. So maybe you're googling about PMP certification, this is a very well known certification and if you're not familiar with project management, check other videos here in my channel where I explain how you can manage your project, what are the standards, what are the steps you need to take in order to achieve one of these certifications and also about other certifications, other frameworks, other methodologies such as Prince2, Scrum, Kanban and something else. Alright, so let's get from start, right? So these two certifications were created by the PMI.org. Visit this website and check it out the latest information. So the Project Management Institute is a nonprofit organization focused on developing the project management profession. We have standards here, education, certifications. It's uh, maybe the largest community of project management professionals in the world. You have business analysts, agile project managers, uh, traditional project managers, and it's such a great journey to be a volunteer and a member at PMI.org. So talking about project management, as you might imagine, these two certifications are based on a standard. So you have actually a guide and it's named the PMBOK guide. We are now moving from the sixth edition into the seventh edition and I have other videos here in my channel explaining differences, also explaining how you can understand better the PMBOK guide. If you're going to the sixth edition, you can still take the exam based on the sixth edition. Then we have the knowledge areas, the processes, inputs, tools and techniques and everything is explained in the other videos. So if you're planning to take your, your exam, be careful because the PMBOK guide is changing from the 6th edition to the 7th edition. There's another video here where you can learn the differences. But first of all, you have to understand that this certification is an older certification. So PMP is more than 30 years old. And this is a new certification, I believe five or 10 years old. So that's one of the reasons because PMP is more well known. This is one of the most valuable certifications in the world. If you Google it, you're going to find PMP in many job descriptions as a prerequisite or maybe something decided for project managers and also for other jobs that you might be looking for. But PMP is, CAPM is growing, so it's older maybe 10 years plus, if I'm not mistaken. This is a new credential, not so new, some years now. And this is one of the reasons because we have more people, credential people, so more people, certified people, if you Google it, probably around 1 million certified people in the world. So here you have uh, fewer people certified, but this is growing, so it's growing and it's important that you take a look. So when you are trying to decide if you're going to go to sit for the seat for the PMP exam or for the CAPM exam, the first thing that you have to understand is that this is focused on junior project managers or on people who are starting in the beginning of the career. So beginners. You're just learning and getting used to project manager. You took a course, you're understanding the PMBOK guide, the processes, how you can manage your project. You should go for the CMPM because no experience is needed. You have to take the course and you have to take the exam. You just take the course and take the exam. Course. Schedule and sit for the exam. All right. So take the course. If I'm not mistaken, you need a 20 hour course, formal course. You need a certificate. It could be an online course, in-person course. No problem. You just need a certificate that you took a course. It could be a free course as long as you have a certificate or a paid course, okay? It is important that you take a course because PMI understands that you are better prepared 
and also that you're going into formal education in any way. If I'm not mistaken, it's 20 hours, but take a look at the PMI website always so that uh, you check the latest available information. And then you can uh, start your application process. I'm going to describe the application process. You go to PMI.org, select certifications, you input your information, education, your experience, and all of that. And then you can sit for the example, the, the, for the exam, you have to pay for the exam in advance. Then you receive a voucher code and you can schedule the exam and take the exam from home or you can go into a test center, a local test center in your city, in your area. When you sit for the exam, it is 150 questions and you have three hours for the exam. Also, as I mentioned, check it out in the PMI website, the latest information, maybe this changes. So right now it's 150 questions and you have three hours. The questions here are going to measure your knowledge, not experience, knowledge. If you know the tools, the processes, so if you take the course and you are able to take the exam. When we think about the PMP, things change because PMP is focused on senior seasoned project managers, so people with a lot of experience and uh, it is expected that you have three to four years, three to five years of experience, and you need 4,500 hours of experience as a project manager. So this is very important and a very uh, unique difference here we have, because some people try to apply for the exam without the experience, and this is really bad. First of all, if you lie in your application that you have the experience and actually you don't have the experience, you might be caught into audit and then you have to send the information and you won't have the information about the experience. And it's not only bad because you do not have the experience, but it's not uh, ethical behavior. So we as project managers, we are very focused on code of conduct and ethics so that we behave properly. So if you don't have the experience, no problem. Nobody started with experience actually. Some people send me a message and you know, it's been 20 years that I manage projects. I am a consulting company and we deliver project management services. We implement PMOs, we implement project management software. Uh, I, I have right now 47 people in my team, but I didn't start with that. I graduated as a freshman to, uh, as a freshman in engineering with zero experience. Then I started managing projects, taking courses, then learning, volunteering, and then I took my PMP certification. So uh, some people, because they find this in the job descriptions, in the vacancies you're applying, they believe that they should get this. Uh, I'm in the college and I go get. PMP, I am a junior person with zero experience, but I need PMP. It's not like that, okay? So nobody is born with experience. That, that's the way it is. And uh, please, do not lie in your application. This is going to be very, very harmful to your curriculum, to your career. It's not good. Do not do that not only because it's unethical and it's not uh, according to our code of conduct, but it's not a really good way to still behave, okay? So you need 4,500 hours of experience, which means three years to five years of experience. So you are going to manage the projects and uh, take step-by-step -step processes. But one of the things that is important here is that you need this experience as a project manager or as the project manager, project coordinator, you are responsible for the project. Some people do not understand or do not read properly the prerequisites for PMP. And if you are a team member for 8,000 hours, those 8,000 hours do not qualify for PMP. 
If you're a team member, if you're a business analyst, if you're whatever other role, those hours do not qualify. You need 4,500 hours as project managers. Maybe you have a different title and PMI understands that. Maybe in your company is the project chief, project coordinator, project leader, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you are responsible for the project. You are doing the initiation, planning, you are creating the schedule, the WBS, uh, you are taking care of the execution, so 4,500 hours of experience as a project manager. This is very important. And the application is similar to CAPM, you go to PMI.org and then you do the application, but you have to submit information about education again, about taking a course, but also about experience, describing every project, describing what you did in the initiation, planning, execution, and providing contact details. So be ready to provide contact details about your boss or your customers, somebody who could uh, uh, you, you know, so witness that you were a project manager. And once you do that, so we have to submit the description of your projects and also contact details from your boss, from your company, from previous companies, whatever, other companies. And uh, as I mentioned to you, PMI might audit that, which is uh, a random process. But be careful so that you do not, uh, you know, commit any, any violation to the code of conduct and ethics. Once you do that, so this is the prerequisite, we also need a 35 hours course. It could be an online course, it could be an in-person course, it could be free course, paid course, whatever. As long as you have a certificate, so it should be a formal course. Some PMI chapters deliver PMP courses, you're going to find PMP courses in LinkedIn Learning, for example, Udemy, other places. As long as you get a certificate, you are fine. The other thing is that you have to sit for the exam, schedule and sit for the exam and be approved in the exam, which now is a 200 questions exam for our duration. This is a very hard and difficult exam, as you probably are going to find out if you Google it, if you find some people who took the exam because it's 200 questions, maybe you think, oh, it's four hours, a lot of time. It is even <laughs> barely enough time, because if you think about it, you have one minute and 30 seconds to answer each of the questions. So you have a time constraint, it's a lot of questions, it's tidying, you have to prepare and you have to be ready in the day, you also you know, take care that you are rested, you have a great, um, you take water with you or food, whatever that. And there's another important difference I would like to highlight before we end this video is that these are situational questions. So PMI is testing your experience, not only the knowledge. You're not going to find, let's say, easy questions as we have here in the CAPM about the tools, about the processes. No, you're going to have questions about the situations. For example, if you have this situation with your sponsor, hey, this happened, that happened, what is the next step? And when you take a look into the answers, you are going to see that maybe all the answers are correct. But PMI is asking you, what is the next step? Or what is the most important thing? What should you do first? How you are going to deal with a situation? So be very careful, there are lots of um, uh, template questions you are going to find in the books in the courses and all of that, prepare, take some time for the preparation, the exam is really difficult. It is also a somewhat big investment, you're going to pay, if you're not a PMI member, you're going to pay 535 US dollars, if you are a PMI member, 435 uh, dollars.
Okay, so that's it about PMP, CAPM. As I mentioned, CAPM is growing. This is going to help you in finding a job, in employability, in upskilling. Do not skip steps. If you do not have the experience, go for the CAPM. You're going to take your next three to five years in building the experience. Then you take the PMP exam. That's it. Check other videos here about uh, the PMBOK guide, preparation, and everything that you need to know on project management, agile project management, project management offices, and also agile organizations and citizen development, a new topic that I included here on my YouTube channel. Stay tuned and share this video.